It had promised a healthcare revolution, but as of early 2016, it finds itself embroiled in a major scandal. Welcome to Watch Mojo News, the weekly series where we break down news stories that might be on your radar. In this installment, we're counting down 10 crucial facts you should know about the Theranos scandal. Number 10. What is Theranos? You'll get your results soon on our app. Thank you for coming to Theranos. Founded in 2003, Theranos, a play on the words therapy and diagnosis, is a health technology and medical laboratory company. As a growing startup based in California, it promised an innovative service to streamline blood testing, making it faster, cheaper, and easier. Our greatest motivation in doing this is, is the byproduct, which is the fact that testing begins to be more accessible for little kids or elderly persons. However, the company is also famously secretive, and exact details about Theranos' methods have proven difficult to ascertain. Its blood testing device, known as Edison, uses a finger stick to draw tiny amounts of blood, from which unprecedented amounts of data can allegedly be found. But Theranos' credibility was called into question in the mid-2010s. Number 9. Who is Elizabeth Holmes? As CEO and founder, Elizabeth Holmes is the face of Theranos and the world's youngest self-made female billionaire. A former student at Stanford University, where she studied chemical engineering, Holmes dropped out of her undergraduate program when she was 19 to pursue her pioneering venture. I found what I felt like I was born to do at a really early age. Despite the fact that Edison has never been subjected to peer-reviewed study, she worked to secure over $700 million from investors for a company once valued at $9 billion. In April 2016, Forbes valued Holmes' own net worth at around $3.6 billion, though that figure had been as high as $4.7 billion before it dipped as a result of recent controversies. Number 8. How does Theranos differentiate itself from other companies? And we've made it possible to eliminate the tubes and tubes of blood that traditionally have to be drawn from an arm and replaced it with the nanotainer. There are three strands to consider when discussing Theranos' claims of innovation. First and fundamentally, it aims for faster tests using less blood. It becomes possible to engage individuals in the testing process in such a way in which they get the information they need at the time it matters. Whereas vials of blood are traditionally required from major veins, the Theranos method only needs microliters taken from a fingertip. Second, Theranos aims to start democratizing the healthcare system by giving consumers direct access to blood tests. This would be done by enabling people to request lab tests without a doctor's prescription. Finally, Theranos' so-called groundbreaking technology has consistently drawn attention. However, it's notoriously reluctant to explicitly reveal its methods. Number 7. Which companies are considered Theranos' competition? The Washington Post describes Theranos as, quote, boldly plowing into a world where two large laboratory testing companies, Quest Diagnostics and Laboratory Corp of America, have billions of dollars of precious turf to protect. Quest was founded in 1967 and LabCorp in 1978, and both are among the largest clinical laboratories in the world. But Theranos has sought to rethink traditional blood testing, and it isn't alone. Abbott Laboratories have developed the iStat device, which requires a physician to draw only small amounts of blood, and Allier has a similar method that received FDA clearance in 2006, something that Theranos has struggled to get. While neither is an exact replica of what Theranos offers, both require smaller amounts of blood to work. Number 6. Who is backing Theranos? Theranos has received widespread attention, partly thanks to its high-profile backers. However, because the company lacks board members that have a medical background, the company has also prompted concern from the public. Instead, most of the members have significant military and government experience. This has led to boardroom shuffling, with former Secretaries of State Henry Kissinger and George P. Schultz being moved from the Board of Directors to a Board of Counselors in 2015. In April 2016, the company announced the addition of multiple, quote, nationally respected laboratory and medical experts to its scientific and medical advisory board. 
But its board of directors still consisted of former Secretary of Defense William Perry, U.S. Senators Sam Nunn and Bill Frist, as well as former senior military figures such as the retired U.S. Marine Corps General James Mattis and former Chief of Naval Operations Gary Roughhead. Furthermore, in February of that same year, Theranos was backed by American lawyer David Boyce, who was made the firm's attorney and was given a spot on the board of directors. Number 5. When did doubts about the company's ability surface? Theranos ran blood tests during a six-month period despite erratic quality control results. After the company enjoyed dramatic early success by securing massive funding, Theranos' reputation came under significant scrutiny in October 2015, when it was the subject of a front-page investigation by the Wall Street Journal. Following the report, which included a series of allegations, increased pressure was put onto Theranos to reveal more details about its product, which it was still reluctant to do. Within a month, Theranos had lost further credibility, and business deals began to unravel. In one of the most prominent cases, the grocery chain Safeway sought to sever ties, despite having spent $350 million building Theranos clinics in its stores. Number 4. What is the scandal surrounding Theranos? First, it was alleged that the vast majority of Theranos blood tests were actually carried out using traditional machines bought from companies such as Siemens AG, rather than its own Edison device. This test was actually performed by the Theranos lab in Northern California on a Siemens machine, uh, a commercial analyzer that's FDA approved and that any laboratory can buy. In many cases, blood was taken from a patient using the finger stick but was then diluted into a larger sample and analyzed using conventional technology. Furthermore, President Sonny Balwani was also accused of ordering Theranos' employees to, quote, perform proficiency tests using third-party machinery at a time when the lab was performing those same tests using its proprietary system. The most serious allegations, for the general public at least, suggest that Theranos' blood test results are often inaccurate and that the questionable data produced could have harmful repercussions for the patient. Among further inadequacies found at Theranos was the employment of unlicensed or underqualified workers and improper use of equipment. Does that seem to suggest that the lab itself is not being well run? Well, certainly uh, the inspectors found a lot of problems uh, in the lab. Theranos came under fire again in mid-April 2016, when the Wall Street Journal reported that federal prosecutors had launched a criminal investigation into whether the company misled investors about the way it does business and what it uses to do it. Number 3. How would the sanctions affect Theranos and Holmes? A letter sent by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, dated March 18, 2016, found that Theranos had not sufficiently corrected its problems. The letter, which was again revealed by the Wall Street Journal, included CMS proposals to ban Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos President Sonny Balwani from the blood testing business for two years. Theranos remains hopeful that CMS won't impose the sanctions, saying, quote, it's all hypothetical at this point. However, should a ban be implemented, the economic damage could be massive and the company's reputation unsalvageable. Number two, did the media and startup culture contribute to this problem? Did we both let the hype get ahead of the story if you're only doing one test? In the world of startup technologies, it's quite common to bend the truth and claim what you have is revolutionary when perhaps it's not. For the last few years, Theranos has been viewed as a revolutionary company. Its CEO has been uh, heralded as next Steve Jobs. Company's been valued as much as $9 billion. There's so much competition and so many people looking for the next new thing. However, while sensationalism may be excusable with regards to consumer tech or social media apps, for example, it is very risky to deviate from the truth in healthcare. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. If a medical startup doesn't do exactly as it claims, then people's lives may be put in danger, which is why recent revelations have caused so much damage for Theranos. If it had introduced the Edison more modestly, maybe the scandal would be less widespread. But there would also be less general excitement for the product. As it happens, there was massive initial interest, resulting in a very public fall from grace. In retrospect, when you, when you look at where you are today, one test with the prick of blood, wasn't that going too far? Number one, will Theranos live up to its hype? 
it's difficult to see Theranos emerging out of this scandal unscathed. Healthcare technologies need to be trustworthy from both the investors and the patient's point of view. But this situation has thrown Theranos' integrity into doubt. Now you're confusing me. How many tests are you doing right now yeah. from a simple pinprick as you described in that TED Talk? Yeah, so right now, just because of this FDA transition, one. we're only doing one. Okay. As pressure mounts on the company and medical authorities scrutinize further, its backers could begin to withdraw. That said, if Theranos can prove that its technology is safe, reliable, and pioneering, then it would enjoy a huge, high-profile victory. Did either call you today and say, you know what, we got to rethink our relationship? Absolutely not. We're incredibly blessed to have partners who have worked with us, have actually seen our technology. But as of April 2016, it's a balancing act between revolution and reliability. And Theranos appears to be failing. Did these facts get you thinking? To vote for which news story is covered next, head over to watchmojo.com slash suggest. And be sure to hit that subscribe button for more newsworthy top tens published every week.